you have now entered the championship mindset, I want you to join us on a journey of excellence, let go of your fears, and reach the best you. That's what we're doing on a daily basis, and that's the championship mindset. That's the essence. Welcome back, family. We got a very special guest. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation we're going to have. Uh, I'm going to have to catch myself, man. Mark, you've always been kind of like that the leader from from our community, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I was kind of I was kind of pioneering uh, in in sports and definitely outside of sports. Um, I would like to welcome to the championship podcast, Mark Hayes. Thanks for having me, brother. Thanks for that intro, man. Thanks for that <laughs> intro. I appreciate that. Well, man, we're just gonna get started. I I think I I definitely undersold what you do for. Um, you know, communities, not just, you know, the one, you know, that we share in Bellflower, but you've, you've moved on and you've branched out, you've uh, kind of grew your roots in, in Vegas and in different industries. So um, before we get into some really hot topics, can you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself and, and your journey? Well, I mean, it, it started, uh, I feel like a long forever ago, but, um, I would say, uh, for me, it really started growing up in our neighborhood, Bellflower area, small world, Sherwood, where, you know, they're right across the street from Ernie Powell, um, going to elementary school there, and um, always just playing sports. Um, you know, sports for me was just an outlet on just life and things that was going on inside the home that, you know, was just a way for me to just outlet and just sports just always – you know, in every sport, I wasn't really stretched with basketball. I even played basketball, played varsity basketball, played football, played baseball in high school. And uh, a lot of it was just uh, for me as an outlet. So as I went through my journey in, in life, um, you know, football was always, you know, something I knew that I can get out of our neighborhood and not only make something to myself, but also, you know, raise in younger, the younger generation, people who have somebody to look up for, look up for uh, to and. I just always wanted to be that person. Um, and as I went through Bellflower High School, um, a lot of success on and off the field. Um, uh, don't give me one thing I do want to say is I did enjoy my high school year. So I never, uh, you know, I wouldn't go back and change anything. And as I went through high school and um, football became, you know, kind of my life. And I really wanted to try to take it to the highest of levels. And um, I did that. I, I, I yeah. went through Flower High, and I was able to, um, you know, have a lot of success, not only on the field, but also we already, you know, a lot of us were able to put Bellflower on the map because before I arrived, I didn't know a lot about Bellflower High School. A lot of people I talked to didn't know a lot about Bellflower High School. And then as I went through my years and some people that was there before me, um, I think it really you know, we start getting all these different people coming into Bellflower High and from Compton and Long Beach and Norwalk. And everybody wanted to come to Bellflower High because of what, you know, the, the culture that we started to create. And I was a part of that. Um, and I never take the credit for everything, but I was a big part of um, everything that was happening at Bellflower as far, even when it was bad things, I was, my name was always brought up. So <laughs> um, famous I, and infamous. <laughs> I accepted that role and, um, you know, I just always hope that I did more good than bad and more positive things for people to look up to. And as I, I went through that journey, I said, you know what, I can do something with football and are at least taking me, it could take me to uh, an education. It could take me to meet a lot of different people and everything that I wanted out of football, I got it. Um, went over to Cerritos College, had a lot of success at Cerritos College on the journey. And um, I want to just take one step back. In high school, I had the teacher, and I, I and I don't want to put her or his name out, but um, they told me that I wouldn't make it to 21. And I, when I, I look back now, I thank them for that because a big part of who I am was came from teachers telling me, "Oh, you're you're not going to be anything, or you may not even be successful and make it to 21." And you know, now that I'm in my late 40s, um, I look back on that journey and going through school, going through junior college, which was rough. A lot of people, you know, because 
you know, just like everybody, I thought I was D1 material and mm -hmm. come to find out I was good enough to play, but my grades wasn't where they should have been all four years. And so I took the journey into junior college because football was in my life and it was in my blood. And I knew that I could get a free education out of it. And then two, I can, you know, go and play at some of the highest levels well, and play against some of the better players. And I want to pause there because I think, you know, for so many people, that's where the story ends, right? I had a dream. I loved sports. Uh, the path didn't work out the way I thought it was. So I'm going to just leave sports alone. It's not for me. Um, or that teacher's voice really starting to, you know, take hold in a person's heart and saying, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just going to stick to the streets. What was that crossroads for you? And you went on to, to we'll get to, the, to the, the glory of the story, but take me through that crossroads. Well, um, I think the first thing, the crossroad that was, um, I was kind of on my own. You know, and it's tough for a 14 or 15 year old to know exactly how to navigate through life when they're on their own. So at 15, I was I was kind of, you know, put out there and, you know, it was kind of like survival. And however you can survive, you survive. If you got to eat jack in the box every day, if you got to if you if you got to uh, walk to school, whatever you had to do to survive to keep your grades up. Um, and for me, the crossroad was when my family decided to go um, and move to Atlanta. And I had two choices. It was either stay and graduate with my friends and family and coaches and people that kind of raised me and, or it was go to Atlanta and start a whole new life and, you know, kind of start over. And I decided to kind of stay back and I lived with a good friend of mine and his mother. Um, and, you know, from there, I just kind of learned how to be a, a mature adult because you know now you really got to fend for yourself because you don't really have nobody there pushing you or, or in your ear telling yeah. you go to class or make sure you don't forget any assignments so you didn't have that so you kind of learned a lot of that as I went I said look I, I got to be responsible for me I got to be responsible for my actions got to be responsible and so my that was my crossroads when my family decided to depart and go to Atlanta. And I was 16. I want to say I just turned 16. And for a 16-year-old kid, I thought I knew it all. And I knew a lot about life, but I didn't know the responsibilities that it came with being an adult. And I learned pretty quick. And that was kind of the, the turning point when I, where I decided to stay back. And I didn't want to leave my friends. I didn't want to leave the people who had raised me. I didn't want to leave my community. I didn't want to leave. I felt like if I left, I just, I kind of gave a lot of people that looked up on me, to me, I let them down. So I decided to stay, stick it out. I didn't know where I was going to live. Um, I didn't know how I was going to get to where I wanted to get to because I was, you know, 15. I, I thought I knew everything. And that crossroad really hit home when, you know, I watched my family get on a plane and they ended up in Atlanta and I was gone. It was still back here in Bellflower and I think that was really the, the crossroad that, that either made me say, hey, I can do this or I got to go to Atlanta because it's too much for me. And so as far as the crossroad, that, that was really the, the turning point in my life where I said I had to, I got to do this because they trusted me to stay. And as a parent, you know, your, your, your parent, they don't want to leave you behind, but if you know, as an adult, I told him, I said, look, I'm going to make something of myself. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Y'all go home and make something of yourself there. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get Everybody's back. Everybody's trying to figure it out. You know, we 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 kind of put this uh, expectation looking back. A lot of people that become adults, you know, you know, second guess the decisions their forefathers made. And you got to realize, like, and my mom and dad were 30 when they, you know, they were 25. They were young when I was young. And they were figuring it out, you know, as I'm just starting to go through that process that they went through. You know, where is, uh, you know, the support through the trauma? And it seems like, um, you know, you had 
people that were also living a football life. And that pursuit is mutually, you know, beneficial. It's, it, it leads to being able to hit a crossroad and say, you know, I may not have it all figured out, but I know this path on the right right here is probably the one I want to go down. And I got some people next to me. So so take us through the JC on to UNLV, because for me as a younger football player, I also lived a football life like you. You know, when you tasted that D1 and, and touched, you know, the NFL, it became tangible for that next generation that was following you. Yeah. I always, you know, just, I'm glad that was, you know, what you just said was a great segue. I, I've always wanted to be, even before I became a dad, and I always wanted to be a role model and not, not necessarily vocal. You know, that, 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 you know, as it was vocal, I wanted to be like by example. I wanted to lead by example. And because when I was kind of growing up, that was how we, you know, the, the leaders were led, they lead by example. It wasn't really too much talking. So I, that, I instilled that in all the younger guys like yourself and some of the other younger uh, guys that I still know and talk to today that, that are having success. I just wanted to be that one person that they can look up to and be like, okay, if Mark can do it, you know, and all the things he went through, you know, may, it may not be so tough. So that kind of lead, led me, you know, to, to junior college. And I think that was probably, that probably was the best decision. Cause I, I, I had a scholarship, but I had to prop back then it was prop 48. Mm, I remember that. Yeah. I had prop 48. Mm. Oregon was, you know, my number one choice and they wanted me to sit out a year and the coaches from Cerritos gave me another ideas and plan and said, Hey, play two years here and um, we'll get you out. And when they told me that, I said, you know what, if Oregon is the place for me, they'll be calling in two years. And um, I was able to go to Cerritos, but I learned a valuable lesson there um, because Cerritos to me was kind of that two year college but it was also like a four year. It felt like a four year, but you only was able to stay two. Um, and so when I went there, everything that a four year college would offer, everything that uh, the people you would be around, the, the curriculum, the, the teachers, the, the staff, everything like that was on to me, prepared me for the next level. And, you know, just being there two years. And I knew I had to go there because I had a lot of people watching me, I had a lot of people, family depending on, you know, on my success. And I, and I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to let anybody down. So when I got to Cerritos, it was a, it was a, a path that a lot of young men always say they don't want to go, oh, I don't want Juco is beneath me or that, that, that's for yeah. people who don't There's have that. Yeah, no, it's, it's a very, out there. yeah. And what they don't know about a lot of people, if anybody that's listening is, with to this the show here, um, junior college is really like a bridge to a university because now you got two years under your belt. I had two years under my belt. I had me a little studio apartment. So paying bills. So, you know, get to and from, you know, so there's a lot of things that in maturity growth for me happened in two years at junior college. So when I went my next journey after I finished at Cerritos, which was probably to me the best thing that and decision that I made because I got two years of college, but I also got two years to grow up and really understand what the next level entailed. And Cerritos taught me a lot about the next level, their history on putting guys out. When I seen how many guys they put at D1, I was like, oh, I can play yeah. two years and have success. And, you know, and coaches said, come in. They had a checklist for me. Look, we know you can play football. We know you, we know your family situation. If you can do these three or four things, get your AA, get your schooling done, perform on the field. Here's some, some goals. And when they gave me those goals, I, I wanted to accomplish them so bad because I knew that they would do their part. And so, I did my part and, you know, my first year I played my freshman coming in as a freshman and, you know, my second year I came back, I was a little bit, a year older, more mature, led the nation in interceptions that year, all first team mission conference. And 
and I had every Division One school that a kid could possibly dream of having, knocking on my door at practice, showing up to my apartment. Like, mm. it was just, the recruiting was just, it was unreal. Like, I wasn't, that was another thing I had to get prepared for, were coaches flying in and coming to games and wanting to take me to lunch. And, and, and not, I'm talking Kansas State to the world, Purdue, um, Can, uh, Kansas, I mean, the University of Notre Dame, um, I mean, you name it, they were at our school every day. And it was just a trip to just know that they were there for me. And I, you know, in that moment, I was like, I did everything I wanted to kind of do for my community, my city. I did it right now because all these schools are here for me. And, and it opened up a bridge to where every year after that, um, I sent people, I sent young men to Cerritos College. I told them all about Cerritos College. And then, you know, and as I transitioned to Division One, um, UNLV, um, and I had, I had Kansas State at the time, UNLV at the time. Um, and this was another crossroad that I had to navigate through and, you know, it, from junior college to a university. A lot of people ask me, man, why you didn't go here? Why you didn't go there? I said, you know, and the biggest thing is I was I was navigating it alone. And, you know, unfortunately I had some people that didn't have my best interests at hand in my life and around me. And, um, you know, I have nothing from UNLV. I mean, my kids live here. I, I, I got my kids because I came to UNLV, but it was other factors that led me to to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I love them now. I love everything about it now. But, you know, that wasn't my first, this wasn't my first choice coming out of Cerritos. Um, and, you know, that, that, that was another. That's interesting you say that because people are always looking outside in and they don't know the full story. You know, people just assume when you go play big time football, everything is peachy. And you've made made it, so there's no reason you should complain or have any, uh, you know, reservation for just, you know, sucking it up or doing, you know, all the all the you know cliches for like why you shouldn't feel the way you do or being treated the way you are, and and why you shouldn't change <laughs> because of those realities. You should just accept it. So I I know there's growth in every space even when people can't see it but but yeah like you know when i see you when i saw you on tv making plays and they're saying you know they're saying cerritos but we know you came from Bellflower. you know <laughs> they kind of say that last school you went to yeah but we know hey this is this is homegrown excellence here yeah it's going to come with the trauma and we're going to talk about that we, I want to talk about mental health. I know that's a big subject for what you're doing in um, in, in broadcasting, but I, I want to know about like playing at the division one level. But then what's after that? A lot of people have to make this uh, very similar, and I I don't want to overuse the crossroads analogy, but we meet that space every couple of years if we're living this life right. We're going to, what's next for me? What's better for me? I'm not just going to stay. I'm not going to go backwards. I'm not going to veer off. What kept you moving and finding out what's next after football? Well, I mean, this this is something I, you know, as we get into deep, a little further in how I, I have my kids and they play sports, man, I, 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 I fell in love with football. I didn't just love it. I fell in love with football. And there's a difference, just like in a relationship. You can love somebody, but if you're not in love with them, that relationship is probably not going to work. So I had a love, I was in love with football because I knew football and I had the ability, you know, and God blessed me with the ability to, to be good enough to play at the next level and even try to take it a little step further. But I knew that a lot of what football was going to give me, 
I had to give back to football 10 times fold. I had to give more back to the game than it gave to me because the game does end. And um, I knew that I was in love with football. It was a point, it came a point in my life when I got to UNLV, I didn't even date for two years. I didn't even, I didn't date for two years. I didn't even have too many girls, uh, not necessarily not, but just relations because I was so dedicated to the game of football that I didn't want nothing to deter me because I was like, okay, uh, high school, check. Junior college, check. I'm at UNLV, check. All right. So I had this checklist and today I still have it. I have a checklist of, you know, things that I want to accomplish goal wise and those things and football was always a big part of that. And I've always had a goal to play professional at some level in football and take it as far as I, I can possibly take it. And, um, that really was my relationship. I was in love with football. I loved everything about it. I loved practice. I loved games. I loved film. I loved studying opponents. I love sitting and watching the players that I'm going to play against the following weekend. You know, and these big time guys that are older than me that are on the radar to go to the NFL. And I was always say, if I can outplay him or if I can dominate this particular receipt, I didn't, I, I didn't play it against some of the best guys in first round draft picks. And, and if I can play just good enough to get seen on this stage, then the opportunity is going to start coming because these are the best of the best in Division One that I'm playing against every week. And so my mentality was, I want to be the best DB, strong safety, free safety, corner, wherever they wanted to line me up at. I wanted to be better than everybody on the field at my position. And that's what my, my, my drive was. It wasn't that I was going to be bigger. I was going, wasn't going to be the fastest, but I made sure I outworked every player that I lined up against. And I studied film because I knew these guys were fast. This is Division One. You ain't got. I know guys are fast. I know guys are athletic. I know guys bigger, big and strong. But I had to find my niche on how to be just on those guys' level. And so when I came into the Division One, I, I was like, I was blown away how fast the game was, but I knew I became a film junkie. I just, mm -hmm. I sat in, I, when everybody was out playing games and going to the club, I was in at the coach's office studying film. All right, who we play? I got to study film. I want to know his tendencies. I want to make sure, because he's 6'3", 210. I'm 5'10", barely 5'10", uh, 200. How can I be better than um, some of these great receivers that are, first, second, third. I, I played against six first rounders. And so it, it really opened up my eyes to not only did I make it, but I still had to figure out ways to be dominant at my respective position. And, and that was, that was in itself sleepless nights. That in itself was not. That's, that's <laughs> also where confidence comes from. Yeah, you know, the that's the birth of uh like you said, dom dominant, but not based on, you know, arbitrary uh, skills or attributes, it's like real. It's like what everybody saw on Saturday or on Friday. It wasn't in the program where it has been listed at five, you know, five, five, six, and the receiver I'm going against is six three. That doesn't mean anything. That film, that ability to figure out what's one weakness I can key on and exploit so that nobody knows the difference, what height I was or what how fast you were. They just know that you can't get open. They just know that this is no go over here. <laughs> you know, it's real. Confidence is real. And so many people think it's something intangible, but no, it's tangible. You're going to know. <laughs> no, no, confidence, I mean, that, that, that that's one thing that got... And I don't really, I didn't really base a lot of individual awards. A lot of, for me, it was always teams, but it was a lot of 
each level from high school to all the way to division one where the individual accolades were good but i was always about i was always about team how what can i do to make our team better what what, what is my role on this team when i do line up out there you have a, you know every player has a role every player has a position that's why i'm a db and you know, other players play their position. So each player had to really perfect their craft. And if you wasn't perfecting your craft, then somebody was going to step in and take over that position or somebody was going to step in. Every year you get younger guys, you get mm-hmm. first, you get you get freshmen that are five-star athletes coming in. And, you know, if you're not honing your craft, it was, it was just times where I didn't even go out. After, during the season, I didn't go out. I didn't, I didn't, after the game, oh, man, let's go out, we won. Oh, man, I'm going to go home, I'm going to relax, man, ice bath. I'm, I'm going to study film Sunday for, for next week's opponent. And, that, and so that was my mentality. I didn't want to go and hang out, and I didn't want to go and risk being around or in some situations where I couldn't get out of, and now I didn't let – because even people back in, in, in my community in Belfar would always watch games, be, be there – and be supportive. Come up, fly, or drive up to the UNLV games. And or if we're on TV, I would get all messages and so of support that you know I was representing. I was representing Bellflower. That's what I, you know, and, and to this day, that's what I represent because that's where I started my roots. And you know, for the next kids that come from there, don't think they can make it. Just look up Mark Hayes, and you'll, you'll you'll know you got a chance. And that's all I wanted to do is for kids to have a chance, because there's a lot of Mark Hayes out there that don't think they can do it, don't have the, whether it's the family support, whether it's the confidence, whether it's the skill, whether it's the grades. But if a kid like myself can come from our community and our town and our neighborhood and make it out and be able to have a story and be able to be to share that with with the younger people that are coming up like yourself and you know just hopefully I was able to at least shine a little bit of light or at least give you some some motivation and you know that that is what kept me in having success especially at the division one level it was tough it, it was tough it was I mean if anybody say playing d1 is easy they lying Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I played D three ball. Everybody on my team was the best player on their team. The corner opposite of me, um, he played against Larry Fitzgerald in high school, and they beat him. <laughs> like you know, these are very solid football players. The safety on my team played for Saint Ignatius. They've been in the top twenty five for the last thirty forty years in high school football. He's played safety. And what I realized is that Bellflower is here to play. I was representing Bellflower on that field, and I was as good, better, and left a legacy at Little Pomona Pitzer, you know, the same way you left it at, you know, Las Vegas, you know, Las Vegas, Nevada, UNLV. So it became very tangible to kind of take us back to square one. And that was the mission I kind of picked up as well is okay people can play football here and go play college football i'm gonna do that that's the expectation you know you and my oldest brother were very good friends i got passed for the first time the first person i ever hit was my oldest brother who got at the end of the hallway put his pads on and let me run full speed and and hit him he's six years older than me (laughs) and i just hit my back flat boom it's just like no chance but when i went the next day to go against other seven-year-olds everybody felt small so i just kind of took that mentality through the entire rest of my career where like even if you were six eight you just felt so small to me at five five because of a mentality how did you hone your mentality i know you watch film but when you you are ne- next to somebody, right? There's only so, a lot of people watch film. When you get out in the grass, and somebody's on the other side who's faster, bigger, stronger. 
how did you hone this ability to say, you know what, none of that matters. I'm going to, I'm going to make these plays that everybody expected me. A lot of, a lot, a lot of the great question. A lot of, a lot of it really just came from, you know, where's that next meal going to come from? Where's that? How am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to pay? You know what I mean? A lot of it, I just kept a lot. I used to have a little note in my locker and it would have all the bills that I used to pay. And I used to keep that because it was time where I couldn't pay those bills and football allowed me to, to pay those bills. And so when I got to UNLV, I was like, bill collectors are way harder than some of these players. And that's how was my mentality. Like, if I was able to keep my lights on, I was able to, 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 to put food in the fridge at 17, 18, 19 years old. And some days wondering when I came home, am I going to have an eviction notice on the door? Like, that was way tougher than lining up against some of the some of the great athletes that I played against. So I always kept that in my mentality, like, of what I overcame. How did I get here to this field? And so when I look back now and I go to a lot of the UNLV games and I see a lot of these kids and I, and I, and I talk to some of them, um, my mentality when I lined up, that's what exactly what it was. It wasn't no, it wasn't nothing but like, if this guy beats me, my lights are going to get turned out. If this guy beats me, I'm going to lose my place. And so that drive and that hunger stayed with me because I always thought about the bills. I always thought about putting food on the table for my family. I always thought about being the first in my family to go to college and be successful. So that's where the confidence grew for me. I knew when I stepped on the field, I, you know, I mean, I wasn't going to be the tallest. I wasn't going to be the fastest. I wasn't going to be the strongest, but I was going to be, I was going to outwork and put in the work to be able to be the most dominant DB on the field that day. And um, I just always kept in the back of my head that those bills were way harder to pay than this <laughs> I really want to kind of bring this show into uh, some different spaces that kind of branch outside of football. And I'm, I'm always, um, a, a little bit self-critical about like how much I elevate sports in life. And I think a lot of people that don't come from a sports culture um, tend to kind of discount the real life lessons that people attain. Um, and I feel like people that come from sports culture tend to like feel like those things can't be, you know, developed somewhere else. Talking about like leadership, we're talking about like, you know, accountability, a lot of things that we've talked about, that you've talked about on your journey, perseverance. Um, where do you stand on that? Do you feel like sports, a, a sport like football, is needed for a young person to go through? Does, does sports really prepare you for life? Or is that a misconception? Uh, it, it, that's 110% accurate. And some people may think differently. Um, that's probably never played sports, but when I look at sports and how I raise my own myself through sports and how sports saved my life, because there was a lot of things we were able to get our hands on, get into and do. And but I always remember like God, you gotta have that two point five or that three point, you gotta have your grades right, you gotta, you know, you gotta you gotta be, you know, off the field. You cannot make too many mistakes because it can all just be taken away from you. So I think sports is a big part of life, and and it doesn't necessarily mean football. It could be any sport: soccer, tennis, golf. You know, it 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 really teaches a lot of kids and young men and young women how to play at a team with a team, play together, uh, accomplish goals together, train together. It just shows you a big part of the team aspect and I think when you get into your life and when you become an adult a mature adult and you start working a lot of it is team task and football allows a person to understand how to when they do get in the real world it makes you understand how to accomplish tasks together um, how to lean on your co-worker or your teammate and 
try to work as one. And, and I think through sports, you learn that from different types of coaching styles. Um, you got coaches that yell. You got some coaches that don't yell. Um, you have different things you have to balance when you're playing sports. I got to go to school. I got to take care of my homework. I got to take care of my grades. I got to make sure I'm not messing up outside because I don't, I, I might, something might happen. I might get kicked off the team if I make a mistake or I get in some mm -hmm. trouble. So I think what sports really allows is for, for people that have played sports have always, to me, been a productive in life. If you look at most of the people that I played with, played against, and a lot of them are successful in their field. And when I do talk to them, that's one of the number one questions. How did sports or how did playing youth sports help you? And it, the same is the same thing, the team aspect of it. There's no I in team. There's no I in team. So when you start looking at your life and you get to a point where you're working with other people, and you know how to work with them. You know how to adjust to somebody who's may never worked on a team or even been part of a team that comes on to your profession. And it's like, okay, look, these are some of the things that a team mate does. And this is your role. This is your responsibility. This is my role, my responsibility, just like sports. Sports yes. has positions. Every sport has a position. Every sport has uh, a coach. And so, and those transition translates to a boss or the, your manager, your team, everybody that's employees or teammates, because ultimate goal is to be successful in that field or in on that field or in the field you're working in. It's the same, the yeah. field, the work field, the, the playing field. That's why that field, to me, that field word is just so relevant. Like, okay, it's the work field, right? And it's the sports field or it's the team. And so that sports is not only a, a great bridge for life, but I think it's the best way to take somebody that's played sports and growing up playing sports and then put them into uh, even college where they got to go to a four-year college. They they know the what it takes to accomplish tasks. And then when you get out into the real world, and you work in a job, are you running a company? You have to have really good teammates that are part of your your team. And to me, I think sports really allows people to understand how to do things together. Um, you you really help me crystallize it. But it's like sports helps you develop this healthy ego. Ego in that, like, yeah, everybody's counting on you to be very good at your role. Everybody's counting on you to, to be, to have a, fan, a fantastic, like, confidence in yourself, preparation, a very high ego in your ability to do that. But it has to be in relationship to everything else that's going on. You know, it's just that piece, just that role. And I feel like you're right. A lot of sports-oriented you know, adults that can rely on that experience tend to be great co-workers, tend to be accountable. They, they understand, like, I might not know. I can listen right now. I actually don't have to be right right now. I can just learn. I could just absorb. And then when I'm ready, put me in where I feel like a lot of people that don't have that experience, um, they're going to learn in real time the things that we've learned in safe spaces, in challenging spaces. And sometimes, like, at the wrong time, <laughs> you're learning, like, basic communication or, like. Get in the chat, ask questions, and I appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Be your best self. Be a champion.